Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be testing out the Nikon Z6. So today I got a chance to test out the Nikon Z6 for the first time. Um, I haven't shot with Nikon for a very long time, as you guys know, I switched from Nikon to Canon some time ago, but I thought that I would give it a chance since it's a new mirrorless camera. You know, there's been loads of um, things happening around Canon and Nikon releasing the cameras. The reviews in general haven't been overly positive, but I thought that I would still give it a go, see how, the, how it works and how it performs and kind of let you guys know what I think about it. First, I'd like to mention this video is sponsored by Squarespace. They're an awesome all-in-one platform for all that your website might need. They have a great customer service in case you have any issues with setting up your website. They have beautiful templates that you can fully customize and you can change around if you change your mind at some stage. They are very affordable to work with. Their plans start at around $10 a month, which is really, really good, especially if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of money to put into your website. It looks super professional, super nice, and I definitely recommend it. So if you guys want to check it out, make sure to use my discount code and you'll get 10% off of your first purchase. So in general, I'm going to be comparing this Nikon with my Canon 5D Mark IV. As you guys know, I've done it with a few other cameras and I kind of find it's nice to see what my camera performs like against the newer uh, mirrorless cameras. You know, it's not exactly the same system, but I just thought that I would give it a go anyway and see if I like it more or less and so on. As with the Canon IOS R, the Nikon Z6 is a full frame camera. It has 24.5 million megapixels. It shoots 4K UHD video at 30 frames per second and full HD at 120 frames per second. The camera works with the new Nikon Z mount lens, so you have a good choice of lenses to pick from. Um, I went for the 24 to 70 because that's usually the um, the lens that I go with for my Canon. So I just thought it would just be fair if I compare it with the same kind of lens that I usually use on my Canon. It also has a touch screen as with the iOS R. Um, it also works with, um, you know, viewfinder or live view. So you can kind of pick whichever one you want to use. In general, when it comes to focus, I was relatively happy. I was using face um, detection in most of them and I found it picked it up quite well. It definitely wasn't as good as the Sony focus, but I think it's hard to beat it with the IAF. Um, I think it's like a, as I mentioned, focus on another level. So I found that, um, you know, it was, it was good in general. I didn't have any major mishaps. I didn't have any major issues with the focusing system, but it just, it, it was just okay. It was still better than my Canon one. Uh, with my Canon, I sometimes find that I miss focus quite badly. Uh, with this one, I obviously didn't have that problem. Um, but as I said, it was just something that was good. One thing that is definitely great about the camera is its price point. Um, the Z6 is only around $1,997, while the Z7 is $3,397. So as you see, the difference is quite big. Um, you know, there's also obviously a difference in resolution because it's 24 megapixels versus 45. Um, I haven't tested out the Nikon Z7 yet, so it's hard for me to tell. But in general, um, you know, the price point is relatively quite much lower. So it's definitely great for people that are looking for a camera that is a bit more affordable um, still I think if I was to choose between the Z6 or the um, a7 III I would probably go for the a a7 III just purely because of colors and because of the video quality and so on um, but in general neither one of those cameras are bad choices one thing that I found really irritating that I didn't realize before shooting was that um, the new Nikon uses a different card. It's a XQD memory card, uh, which is completely different from the SD and the CF cards that you usually use in any other system, which means you need to have a specific card for that camera and you need to have a specific card reader for that camera, uh, which I didn't realize beforehand. And afterwards, when I was trying to get my footage off um, of the card, I realized I didn't have a reader, so I had to go back to the rental place and ask them to do it for me 
which was quite irritating. I just feel like anytime you have to buy a new piece of equipment like SD cards, which, you know, I have quite a lot of, um, it's just extra cost that I don't really need. Um, you know, I just don't see a point in it, but I guess that's what it is. And that's, I, I, I'm not sure what was the thinking behind using that particular card, um, but that's what it is. So just keep that in mind when buying the camera. In general, when it comes to shooting video, um, the quality was pretty good and I have to say the stab stabilization of the footage worked pretty well. I was walking in and out and I was walking around the model and um, it was pretty stabilized. I didn't have many problems with uh, working on that, so that was great because as you guys know, um, I struggle with that with my Canon a lot where the footage is super shaking and it's just so hard to stabilize it and make it look nice. So it was definitely a plus. Um, the model was quite um, in focus on most of the stuff so um, I was pretty happy. So in general the camera is pretty easy to use, it's pretty small and light which is obviously a plus. Um, I found the menu was pretty straightforward to set up, however what I didn't realize is that at the beginning I was shooting in video mode. It's a very easy mistake to make, it's a very small switch you know, so I ended up shooting um, a bunch of photos in that mode and what I didn't realize is that it was shooting JPEGs and was shooting really low res JPEGs. So I was looking through the photos and I was like hmm why are they so blurred and why are they so you know small and and it just doesn't look like a proper nef and then i realized that i was actually shooting in video mode um but you know usually if i have video mode on my canon it doesn't like me let me take any photos but here it still did but it just shot really compressed low res jpegs um which i think is kind of silly because it's an easy mistake to make especially if you're taking both photo and video and switching between the two modes so i thought that maybe this is something that they should have kind of you know figured out a bit better One major difference that I definitely noticed in the photos afterwards, after I was looking at them on the computer, is the colors. As I mentioned at the beginning, it was something that was a big concern of mine. And unfortunately, it proved true. Yet again, I just didn't really like the colors that I got in Nikon. I found them to be much harder to color grade afterwards. Um, you know, with Canon, I was using my presets as I always do with any of my images, same with Sony, and I never have a problem. And and when I applied the same presets to my um, Nikon files, everything just looked really wrong and there was quite a lot of adjusting I had to do. So this is definitely something that is a big thing for me, that is a very negative thing when it comes to the camera. Um, you know, in general, I find color grading is such an important part of somebody's workflow and of the kind of final in uh, outcome when it comes to images. And, you know, it was just um, something where Nikon was definitely lacking for me. Um, I found the Canon images to be much better to color grade. In general, I found the photo quality to be quite a bit better in Canon, even though the focusing wasn't as good. Um, I found the... Um, dynamic range to be a bit better in my Canon and just I find it handled the light a bit better than Nikon. All in all, I think I enjoyed using the camera. I think the video footage was quite good, but considering the problems I had with color grading my images, I don't think I would be purchasing it anytime soon. I think when it comes to um, colors, Nikon still has quite a long way to improve. I think, you know, any Sony uh, photos or Canon are always so easy to color grade and they're always so simple. And I find with Nikon, I was struggling. So in general, it's a good camera. I would probably not be spending my money on it if I could decide between um, this one and the Sony a7 III which is at the same price point I would probably go for Sony um, and yeah in general I just think that it's a bit of a better camera but that's just my personal feelings it's still an amazing camera so if you guys are thinking about it it's definitely worth testing it out um, let me know what you guys think about it let me know if you got a chance to work on it and what you think and I would love to hear what you got to say so if you did like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up please subscribe to my channel and i will see you next time